In the late 1800s, a man named Edward Kleinman would establish a construction company named Kleinman Bausefrank in St. Gallen, Switzerland. This company would soon become Europe's leading pioneer in underground construction. The company would soon construct various water tunnels underneath the city of Stahlberg in Stoland, and that would carry water from Lake Stahlberg to the ocean. After the First World War ended in 1918, Kleinman Bausefang would construct military bunkers in Switzerland. In 1924, the Hammer Valley sawmill would be constructed in Hammer Valley, situated far away from any existing infrastructure at the time. The sawmill would catch logs from the river after trees were cut down upstream. During the Second World War, Stahlberg suffered heavily from German bombings. The result was many residents leaving the city forever, and many were made homeless. Fortunately for the city, however, a young entrepreneur named Jeff Walter founded Walter Corporation, a company that would be a massive help in rebuilding the city's infrastructure alongside Kleinman Behausafong and Hammer Valley Hydro. Following the war, Edward Kleinman's son, Eric Kleinman, takes over Kleinman Behausafong. He then enlists Belgian scientist Jeanne Berg. Thus, the company was renamed to Bergman Group. Due to Jean de Berg's involvement in the company, Bergman Group began to focus more on research and development, inventing textile reinforced concrete, revolutionising the construction industry. Many years after the war, the founding of Stahlberg Nuclear Weapons took place, an organisation intent on equipping Stahlberg if ever a Third World War erupted. The project gathered a lot of support and funding from Jeff Walter. The organisation was run by many board members. Although some had genuine intent on keeping Starburg safe, others were majorly corrupt and held back information from the others and partook in deceitful practices. Starburg Nuclear Weapons builds a military bunker underneath Walter Tower. The construction agreement is signed by Ira Malley, Mark Sim Sadowski, Sven Olsen, Jeff Walter, Gallis Durkus, and Mael Jansen. During the construction of the bunker, SNW discovered something. What they discovered is left vague, but it may be a type of green mushroom that can only be grown in Stahlberg. SNW begins to bioengineer these mushrooms to create Stahlberg mushroom virus, a virus which slowly kills its victims by growing mushrooms on the body. The virus also causes hallucinations and violent behaviour. SNW would sell this bioweapon to the highest bidder. In Hammer Valley, Hammer Valley Hydro begins construction of the Hammer Valley Dam, slightly upstream from Hammer Valley Sawmill. In 1958, an ore mine in the municipality of Orvensua dries up, and many workers move to the city of Stahlberg, leaving Orvensua largely neglected. In 1959, the Hammer Valley Sawmill is badly burnt and production is halted. During the 1960s, Stahlberg experiences its peak industrialization, with lots of wealth being developed, largely due to steel manufacturer Stahlberg Steel. At an unknown time in Stahlberg's history, a man named Andrew Hertz would build a machine known as God of the Underground, with the assistance of seven masked men. The machine would run on five ingredients, some of which were basic materials such as sand, rocks and water while others were a bit more complex, like ornus and humans. The exact function of the machine is unclear, although it has been said to save the poor people. The machine is firstly linked to the Raven Research Institute, mainly due to the Raven logo situated on it, and secondly to the underground city and the Stahlberg Underground, a myth in Stahlberg that states the existence of an underground city in the vast underground network beneath Auburn Sewer. There are multiple interpretations of the myth, some saying that the city is a utopia with waterfalls and immaculate infrastructure. Others describe the city more as a purgatory. The city is maintained by the cult Stahlberg Underground. In 1962, the Hammer Valley Dam finishes construction and the Hammer Valley Sawmill is repaired. The dam is fitted with a chute that carries logs downstream so that the sawmill can still be operational. Three years later, Hammer Valley would become a national park. Stahlberg soon begins to run out of developable land, leading to the city expanding into the municipality of Orbensua in 1973. 
Walter Corporation begins to renovate Aubonzoa, constructing cheaply built tenements over the site of the old mine. On the 2nd of May of that same year, an inspection of Cespit Street in Aubonzoa is filled out by Johann Stahlberg, revealing the incredibly unsafe building materials that many of the buildings in Aubonzoa were built with. Buildings were apparently built using scrap metal instead of rebar, and desert sand was used in concrete. The report, however, is dismissed. Reasons include that the building materials will be enough to serve until replacements are built, as well as personally insulting Johann Stahlberg's ability as an analyst. Around the same time, Hammer Valley Hydro begins construction of the Two Gorges Dam, a scaled-down version of the Hammer Valley Dam located further west. Unfortunately, the company started to have financial issues, and many cuts had to be made to the dam's construction. Also, Walter Corporation's involvement in constructing tenements in Orbensua rapidly increased in an attempt to house Stahlberg's growing workforce. In 1977, Jean de Berg made reports about a new innovation that was said to greatly benefit the construction industry. However, before he could publish his official report on the matter, he was forcibly relocated into the S&W bunker beneath Walter Tower and made to work for the organisation as head of Science Team B2. Berg was allowed to write letters to Eric Kleinman, but what he didn't know is that Kleinman would never actually receive these letters. In actuality, Kleinman had no idea where Berg had gone. The Bergman group would later suffer from several problems in West Germany without the help of one of its co-owners. Kleinman begins to make bad and impulsive decisions as a result. While constructing a cistern, Stahlberg Bank freezes Bergman Group's account to prevent further financial damages to the company. SNW, noticing this, begins to see Bergman Group as a threat that may accidentally uncover the SNW project. And SNW begins to plan to bankrupt the company. The acquisition will also allow them to gain greater influence and control over the underground network beneath Stahlberg. In early 1979, shareholders begin to lose faith in the Bergman Group, a situation made worse by SNW's involvement. SNW then blackmails Jeff Walter into making his company, Walter Corporation, acquire Bergman Group. On the 25th of May of that same year, the Bergman Group begins work on a new freshwater tunnel under Jeff Walter's management. This tunnel was met with criticism by Green War, a group of environmentalists who claim the tunnel would lower the water level of Lake Stahlberg considerably. The tunnel faced many issues. The construction almost stopped multiple times and workers were moved around to other projects. The chance of a strike was very high. The CEO of Hammer Valley Hydro, Alex Hartman, arrives to give Bergman Group advice on how to continue. Also, during the construction of the tunnel, the green mushrooms bioengineered by SNW are discovered by workers, and they begin to be documented. It seems that their ability to call Starbug mushroom virus would remain largely undiscovered, as the mushrooms would be used as a drug by the population of Starbug. The Blackrock nuclear power station is then built. The construction had a lot of involvement from SNW, and a secret control room was built, which would allow for SNW to control the entire facility, giving them access to uranium stores, which they would transport down the vast underground network of tunnels maintained by the Bergman Group, as well as compartments on trains in Stahlberg's railway system. In mid-February of 1980, SNW made Bergman Group become bankrupt under Walter's management, ruining the reputation of Walter. Stahlberg Mayor Adolf Altmaier says that the construction of the water tunnel will continue, although this eventually turned out not to be true. Following the bankruptcy, every employee is fired, except for a man named Eric, no correlation to Eric Kleinman, and he was made to work alone in the tunnels, something which he would have nightmares about. He worked alone for a while, until another employee, named Robin, arrives and accompanies him. Their friendship is stagnated, Eric and Robin spend a lot of their time arguing, mainly due to the fact that Robin is incredibly careless and causes many accidents. Although, while exploring the tunnels, Eric discovers green mushrooms and finds out that they are very well documented. He then has fun consuming the mushrooms with Robin. In 1981, SNW plans to bankrupt Starberg Steel, 
as the CEO, Mikhail Rosenthal, potentially had incriminating knowledge about SNW. Jeff Walter was already friends with Rosenthal, and thus was made to quickly make a deal with him, changing over management of the company. On the 13th of September, Jeff Walter lowers wages for the factory's workers, trying to promote a strike so that the factory can be shut down. On the 20th, working conditions had gotten so bad that an employee nearly falls into one of the steel ladles. On the 26th, the Union of Metal Workers begins negotiating with Walter, trying to protect the rights and lives of the workers. But the attempts are futile. After two weeks of deliberation, the Union of Metal Workers stages a strike at Starburg Steel. The Union is later criticised for having no clear direction for their demands, and there were accusations of harassment. After three days of striking, Stahlberg Steel goes bankrupt. Attention all personnel. I regret to announce that the furnaces of Stahlberg Steel will be let to cool permanently. The factory will be closed immediately. Thank you for all these years. That's what you get for striking. For the remainder of the month, the economic upset from the bankruptcy caused more than half of the city's population to be unemployed. The bankruptcy would also further cripple Hammer Valley Hydro, as Starburg Steel was one of that company's major clients. The wife and child of the CEO of Hammer Valley Hydro, Alex Hartman, die in an incident related to the lack of maintained infrastructure that the bankruptcy of Bergman Group and Starburg Steel had caused. Hartman, with no knowledge of SNW, blames Jeff Walter for their deaths. S&W then plans to bankrupt Hammer Valley Hydro as well, as there were several links to the Bergman Group, and the dam would be a good alternate power source for the bunker. The company would also be an easy acquisition due to Hammer Valley Hydro's struggling financial situation. By late November, protests had started erupting all over the city, and Auburn Sewer had fallen into anarchy with major drug problems and prostitution. Anders Peterson offers thousands of jobs to work in the military. In December, Alex Hartman tries to sell Hammer Valley Hydro to a person with the potential to save the company from bankruptcy, but he backs out at the last second, likely due to S&W bribery or blackmail, and the company is sold to the unwilling Jeff Walter. Hartman begins to become incredibly paranoid and orders doors to the control room in Hammer Valley Dam to be locked by default as well as ordering new locks to be installed, and checking employees' lunchboxes. The imminent acquisition motivated Hartman to send hateful letters to Walter. His secretary, Caitlin, records these incidents in order to provide testimony for any future investigations. On the 16th of December, martial law is officially declared in Stahlberg to quell the massive amounts of civil unrest and protests taking place. However, many members of the public believe that the martial law caused more harm than good. On the 5th of June 1982, Hammer Valley Dam closes. This causes the log chute to stop being maintained. By the 14th, Jeff Walter's management bankrupts Hammer Valley Hydro. Walter begins to severely mistrust SNW. He sends an employee down into the bunker and reports that SNW is creating more than just nuclear weapons. Walter tries to uncover this conspiracy and escape from their influence. However, SNW discovers what he's doing, and Walter is forced to run away. Citizens of Stahlberg, let me ask you, who was it that rebuilt this city? Who was the one that protected this city and dedicated his whole life to its well-being?
but I won't let them destroy Stahlberg. My life's work. The corrupt officials want to silence me, but I won't let them. They will never find me, and I won't rest until everyone knows the truth. They have exploited my financial imperium for their own benefit under the veil of protecting the city and its people. They must be stopped before it's too late for the sake of our future and livelihood. They're building a... Uh, Mr. Walter, some men from the military just barged in looking for you. Walter hides out in a villa owned by Mikhail Rosenthal, who was friends with Walter, and knew enough about S&W to know and trust that Walter's takeover of his company, Starberg Steel, was not ill-motivated. Walter then begins trying to corroborate evidence against S&W, along with a police officer named Max Collar. On the 12th of July 1982, a scammer claiming to be a representative from Walter Construction Corporation's foreign development scams half a million out of the Hammer Valley sawmill. Several months later, a clogger mounts in the Hammer Valley log chute, preventing any logs from reaching the sawmill. Even after the bankruptcy, Alex Hartman occasionally still entered the Hammer Valley Dam late at night, trying to uncover Walter's whereabouts. He also sets aside a lot of money and hides it in Hammer Valley, and plans to use it to track down Walter while being outside official accounting. My name is Alex Hartman. I was just betrayed by the man who practically built this whole city. It started with Bergman, then Stahlberg Steel, and now my company, all bankrupted by Jeff Walter. He bought the companies for next to nothing and then ran them straight into the ground. But that's the least of my problems. With the company out of business, there's no way we can keep everything in good repair. Things are breaking down all over the city, but no one's doing anything about it. The police, the mayor, and now it seems like even the governor's in his pocket. They care more about his money than what he's doing to this place. Whatever he's planning, it's going to happen. There's one thing I'm sure of. Everything's about to fall apart. On the 15th of March, 1983, Patty Hanker suggests for the construction of a uranium mine by Lake Stahlberg. They reasoned that due to modern technology, the drinking water would be safe. Aaron Reed notices several shortcomings in the plans. The mine's construction plans are passed despite the plan's drawbacks presumably due to the involvement of SNW. Water pollution increases in Lake Stahlberg after the mine's construction. During the mid-1980s, Hartman leaves his Hammer Valley hiding place due to his suspicions of Walter knowing where he is, and he relocates his operation to the Pittith Sewer Canal. Hartman also travels to Walter Tower and sets a trap underneath the building, whereupon a set of explosions would go off if Jeff Walter were ever to return. While down there, Hartman discovers the entrance to the SNW bunker, although his attempts to enter are unsuccessful. In 1986, Walter Corporation stops maintaining Turnip Hill, a small town outside of Auburn Sewer, and it is taken over by homeless people. It is later connected to the before-mentioned Auburn Sewer, and a market and school are built. The town is also connected to the vast underground tunnel network. On the 27th of April, 1986, Andrew Hertz, the man who created the machine, dies, and his grave is situated outside of Turnip Hill. He leaves behind at least one son, named Kevin J. Hertz. On the 6th of August, a scientist in the S&W bunker named Richard, who had become mentally unstable, starts to see sightings of a human figure between his room, G2, and the neighbouring G1. The residents of G1 also reported sightings. Richard steals a bucket of paint and paints images of the figure all over his room. These paintings resemble Morco, a being who could be one of the seven masked men who helped build the machine. On the 8th of August 1986, a metro train carrying nuclear material, as well as 86 passengers, takes a wrong turn after a signal error and ends up crashing inside the S&W bunker. They are immediately detained and held captive, 
in fear that the SNW project would be exposed if they ever escaped. The crash also seems to have caused a minor outbreak of Starburg mushroom virus. Alex Hartman used the Metro accident as more reason to hate Jeff Walter, as the crash was right beneath his tower. Inside the bunker, the irradiated passengers are all executed, and the scientists are locked in their rooms. The mad scientist Richard escapes the bunker. On the 9th of August, Jean de Berg manages to distract the guards and is able to phone Starburg Steel, trying to contact Eric Kleinman, but no one answers, as the factory was abandoned five years ago, which Berg is unaware of. Kleinman? Kleinman, can you hear me? I'm not sure if you've gotten any of my letters. I'm trying to escape today. I don't let anyone use these phones, but I managed to distract them. Kleinman, are you there? That same day, he escapes the bunker after nine years of captivity. He later ends up hiding in a basement on Castle Rock Island. On the 10th, the bunker is closed and evacuated due to the rising SMV infection. The board of directors are moved to a boat owned by Hans Magnusson. All equipment remains in the bunker, as it will be too inconvenient to recover the inventory. SNW plans to find Jean de Berg and Richard. Jean de Berg continues to hide in Castle Rock Island, presumably as he is too scared to leave. On the 6th of November, he discovers a small mushroom growing on his hand, a sign that he has been infected with SMV. On the 9th, now both hiding out from SNW, Berg comes into contact with Jeff Walter and they exchange information on the corrupt organisation. Over the next couple of weeks, Berg attempts to find a cure for SMV. He looks into orange mushrooms, but discovers that they are a completely different species of mushrooms. Berg resisted the temptation to contact Kleinman, as he thought that the sight of his dying body would be too much for him. On the 24th, Walter sends the police officer Max Collar to help him find a cure but despite their combined efforts, a cure is not found. By December, Walter believes that Berg is beyond saving. Within the same month, Alex Hartman meets with Mikhail Rosenthal at his cottage by Lake Starburg and enlists his help in finding Walter, as he is unaware that Rosenthal has already allied himself with Walter. Rosenthal, however, chooses to assist Hartman in order to forward any information to Walter that would help him defend against any attack. Alex Hartman also meets with Eric Kleinman and convinces him that Jeff Walter is the one that kidnapped Jan de Berg by claiming to have insider information from a reliable source and saying that Max Collar was one of Walter's henchmen. Hartman would find Kleinman very gullible and would use him for sourcing dynamite. The plan would go sour for Rosenthal, however, as Hartman manages to follow Collar back to the villa which promoted him to confront Rosenthal about his actions as a double agent. This led to Hartman torturing and then murdering Rosenthal. On the 18th, Max Collar begins interviewing Jeff Walter. On the 19th, Alex Hartman takes Eric Kleinman to the villa to confront Jeff Walter. This is Max Collar interviewing Jeff Walter. It's December 19th, 1986. Let's begin. Last time I was talking about Xander Berg, he was... What's that noise? Someone's coming. Jeff Walter, we meet at last. Who are you? You're not letting me handle this. You know who I am. I'm the one who's going to give you what you deserve. Oh, you must be Alex Hartman, and you, Eric Kleinman. It's nice to finally meet you. Berg told me a lot about you. What did you do to him? I know that you kidnapped him. I didn't do anything to him. Here, take this. You can find him there. He's not feeling well and... Eric, you can go. And you, Walter. We have a lot to discuss. So, what do you want of me? I know that your company went bankrupt, but that wasn't my fault. Is that why you're here? You did more than that. You destroyed my life. You killed my wife, my child, and this whole damn city. Put the gun down! Gun! What did you do? It was his fault. Rosenthal did the same. 
same mistake. He didn't do what I said. You don't understand. Yes. Uh, Look, we have to talk about this. Yes. We have to. I want to show you something, okay? Don't move. I, I just... Uh, what did you do? Why did you do that? This wasn't supposed to happen. Why? Why? It's over. Everything. Why is this thing on? I need... Kleinman leaves for Castle Rock Island and meets up with Gianna Burke who can't write or even stand, and is slowly dying with heaps of mushrooms covering his skin. Kleinman evidently stayed with Berg, as he soon contracted the disease. They soon die holding each other's hands. <laughs>